Hey, I'm Vea and this is Case by Case Divorce. Thanks so much for clicking on this video and sharing your time with me. Today I'm going to talk about mediation. I'm going to describe the different types of mediation that there are, situations where mediation works well and situations where it doesn't, and I'm going to give you 10 awesome tips of how to prepare yourself, what to be ready with when you're going into a mediation. Stick around till the end because the last two points are the most important and I don't think you're gonna hear them anywhere else. And as always, if you find this information helpful, click all the buttons down below and of course share this with people you think it's gonna help because that's the whole point. But let's get started. Okay, there's a few different types of mediation. Some mediations are court mandated in certain states and provinces where you can't even initiate a trial or a hearing until you and your ex have attended a mediation. These court mandated mediations or free mediations offered by family justice centers and things like that are a lot more casual Casual. Um, some of the same rules apply and some of them don't. Keep watching, it's going to be obvious which ones don't apply. Mediation works really well if you and your ex have, you know, almost come to an agreement on everything, but there's just a few sticky little items that you can't come to an agreement on. Mediation can be really helpful to just iron those out. Mediation is not helpful if you're dealing with a high conflict or a narcissistic person. The whole point of mediation is coming to resolve and conclusion, and that's not what narcissists want. Narcissists wanna keep you hooked in, they wanna keep feeding off your energy and your reactions, so coming to agreement works against what they're looking for. However, sometimes we can't avoid a mediation. For example, if you're broke and you're facing either a $200,000 trial or a $20,000 mediation, you're gonna pick the mediation and hope for the best. So keep watching and I'm gonna tell you how you can best prepare yourself to be successful in that situation. Private mediations are quite expensive. Generally, the people who do mediations are high-level lawyers, so they're charging between three and $500 an hour, and then you're also gonna be paying for your own lawyer or counsel at another however many hundred dollars an hour. Mediations can last a really long time. It's not uncommon for them to start at nine in the morning and go as late as 9, 10, 11 p.m. at night. So if you do the math, that's a really expensive day. Some mediations are longer than one day. They can be two or three day mediations, each as long as that. So they can be quite costly, but again, they're cheaper than an actual trial. Mediations work differently than a court hearing or a trial because you're not submitting evidence, there's no affidavits, and the whole idea of what's wrong or right or what's fair or not or what's legal doesn't really matter. The whole point of the mediation is just to settle. So if you're arguing about money, for example, in a trial, you could submit all the information about tax returns and proving other people's incomes, proving your own income. You can bring out case history showing you know, previous judgments. In a mediation, none of that's gonna matter. You can basically pull numbers out of the air and just say, let's just agree their income is this and my income is this. So what we're doing in mediation is we're doing a cost benefit analysis constantly. You know, if we can't decide on this today and it goes to trial, how much is that gonna cost versus how much am I gonna lose if I just agree to this now? That's the type of thing we're thinking about in mediation. Before private mediation even starts, there are three things that are gonna happen. You're gonna get intake forms from the mediator, you're gonna get an intake call from the mediator, and your lawyer is going to provide a mediation brief. The intake forms are going to request things like a retainer, and it's gonna want a history of your relationship. It'll be asking questions about, you know, was there ever any abuse? What's the relationship with the other person and the children? Were there ever any problems? What's the history of finances? How did the relationship work? As always, keep copies of all of this and file them in your binder. Check out my video there on how to do that. This is where you can indicate any problems with previous abuse and any safety concerns. That'll come into play in a minute. I'll explain that in just a sec. Next is the intake call. The mediator will call you and your ex separately. These calls can take up to an hour. 
The Mediator prefers it to be shorter, and of course, for a cost-effective reason, it's better for you if it's shorter. So be prepared with your top five problems in the relationship, your top five problems with parenting, a child-focused, solution-based offer. So here's what's best for the children, here's what I want. Your top three or five examples of abuse, and here again, you can outline or specify any safety concerns. Finally, before the mediation even starts, your lawyer or counsel is going to provide the mediator with a mediation brief and so will the other party. A mediation brief is a, a broad stroke document that's just giving a general outline of how the relationship went, what the problems are that we're trying to mediate and what you're trying to get. So it's gonna show here's what the problems are and here is my position on that. Your lawyer will draft that for you. Make sure you get a chance to see it before they send it in so you can add in anything that's missing. Mediations can occur in a few different places. If it is a court ordered or a court mandated mediation, it can occur in a courtroom or an informal boardroom in the courthouse. If it's offered through the Justice Center or something like that, it will be even more informal just in the justice officer's office. If it's a private mediation, there's a few different ways that it can go. Before COVID, mediations used to be done in the mediator's office in a boardroom and your lawyer and you and their lawyer and them and the mediator would all be in the boardroom. If safety concerns have been outlined in the intake form or in the intake call, the mediator may recommend or you can suggest that you want the shuttle style mediation where you're in one room with your lawyer, they're in th another room with their lawyer, and the mediator goes back and forth between the two different rooms so that you're not ever in the same space as your ex. If you are in a mediation situation where you're in the same room with your ex, don't ever look at them or speak to them. This is a technique that basically empowers you by not even granting them the power of significance. By refusing to look at them or speak to them directly, you're sending the signal that they don't even matter. And that can be a real blow to someone with a high conflict personality or someone who's a narcissist. Um, so instead, what you're gonna wanna do is direct your gaze and any comments to your counsel or lawyer or their counsel or lawyer or the mediator. Now that we've had COVID, a lot of mediations are happening over Zoom. So this can be you go to your lawyer's office and you're sharing one computer there, or it could be that you stay home and your lawyer stays in their office and everybody's in their own space. If you're doing a Zoom mediation, I highly recommend getting a post-it note and sticking it on your screen right over where your ex's face is so that you don't even have to see them. This is just another way to keep your power with you. It can be really triggering to look at them and their mannerisms, and if you can just block that out with a post-it, why not? Okay, so before your mediation, what you're gonna wanna prepare yourself with is a list either in a notebook you're gonna bring with you or on your laptop that you're gonna bring with you of the points that are up for mediation and your high and low on both. So you're gonna wanna write a note for yourself about what's your blue sky scenario here, like what would be the best possible outcome, and also what is the lowest thing that you will accept. And have that outlined for yourself for each particular topic. Another thing you're wanna, gonna wanna have ready is snacks. Again, these days can be really long. You're gonna wanna have some high protein, some slow burning carbs, some healthy fuel to keep you going. Don't bring a bunch of sugar so that you're peaking and crashing. We just want something healthy to munch on. Also consider bringing, you know, having some guided meditations on your phone or some breathing techniques. I know for one of my mediations, my lawyer had me set up a little yoga spot and I brought my mat and I just did yoga in between. Especially if you're doing the shuttle style mediation, there can be a lot of downtime, like hours and hours of downtime while the mediator is talking to the other party. So why not use that time to build yourself stronger and keep your nervous system calm rather than cracking out on your phone. Another great strategy for mediations, especially if it ends up running into the long day type of thing, is to take breaks. Mediators will offer 
a few breaks, but not many. And especially if you start feeling yourself getting charged or emotionally overwhelmed, just excuse yourself and go to the bathroom. I like to set a reminder on my phone so that something reminds me like, hey, it's been an hour, it's time to take a break. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can just excuse yourself, go to the bathroom, breathe, look at yourself in the mirror, tell yourself how strong you are, tell yourself how empowered you are and how everything's gonna be okay no matter what. And then get back in there and slay. Have a backup buddy ready and prepared for you to text or call or even two or three friends or family members. This can be a long day. It can be really emotionally charged. It can be overwhelming and confusing. You might get confused or scared about a couple points. It's really great to have some friends or family who know today is your mediation. They maybe even have a copy of your list of here's what we're mediating and here's my top and bottom line for both. And just have people on the ready so that they know if you're texting, need to they need to text back if you're calling they're ready to answer have your tribe ready to help you and support you through this also you're gonna want to expect to be bullied okay mediators are not gentle hair petting soft talking people they're there to force you and your ex into some kind of an agreement and they're they don't do it nicely it can be uh, really quite shocking um how aggressive they can be in their tone and their choice of words so be ready for that pull your big girl pants off harden your heart have your shell armored and ready to go be ready to for the hits know that they're coming and just stay strong because it's not personal they're just trying to get this mediation done with and get your file off their desk. You've almost made it to the end. These are my last couple points and they're without a doubt the most important. What you need to know is that a mediation is not a trial. Any agreements made in mediation are voluntary. This isn't a trial. There is no judge telling you what's going to happen. Your mediator for sure is going to be bullying you and you may even find that your lawyer is trying to strong arm you but the bottom line is you don't have to agree to anything that you don't want to agree to one of the most common techniques the mediator or your lawyer will use is this idea of time pressure they'll say things like if you don't agree to this it's going to end up going to trial and we know that's going to be between a hundred and two hundred thousand dollars that's fine, but what they're not telling you is in the average province or state, you can't just book a trial for next month. At least where I live, trial dates are booked more than a year in advance. So if you can't come to an agreement on it today, maybe it's going to go to trial, but that's not gonna happen until next year. And between then and now, there's so many different steps that you can take to avoid having that trial happen. So don't buy into the time pressure. Don't settle for anything that you don't feel 100% comfortable with. You still have the power in this mediation. It's not a trial. You're not in front of a judge. You get to agree to what you want to and you get to not agree to what you don't want to. In that same vein, if you're moving down your list of what's being mediated and there's a certain thing that you're not quite sure on, it's a great thing to do to just say, you know what, I'm not sure about this one, can we move on? Also, the way most mediators work is they move from the easiest things to agree to to the more difficult things, uh, which is good and bad. Getting some agreements under your belt as, as a group creates a lot of momentum you know you feel like okay we're actually getting something done the downside to it though is that by the time you're deciding on these heavy hitting topics you're probably mentally emotionally and energetically exhausted so be ready for that use the tools i've already given you to be fresh and strong even at the end of the day Okay, my final tip, and this is the most important one, especially if you're dealing with a high conflict or narcissistic person is get anything that's been agreed on signed before anyone leaves the office or before the call is done. It is a 
textbook move for a narcissist to spend an entire day mediating and say, yeah, we'll draft these up and we'll get them signed and then just refuse to sign and you've just blown 15, 20, $25,000 on nothing. So if a few items have been agreed on, get them signed before the end of the meeting, before the end of the call. Everything else you can either agree to mediate later, maybe it's gonna go to trial, it can just be tabled. If there's been agreements, get it in writing. So that's my video on mediation. Mediation can seem stressful and overwhelming at first, but I hope this video has given you just a general idea of what it is and what to expect and how you can be ready. And the most important thing I want you to take away from this is that mediations are voluntary in that no one can make you agree to anything. They can pressure you and they can bully you, but they can't make you agree. So get really strong in what you are okay with and what you're not okay with and know that even if you get some mean words or some mean tones thrown at you, you're safe in that. No one can take those things away from you, at least not at this stage. I really hope this video has helped. Please share it with people that you think might find it useful. And thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. Take good care. Bye.